Welcome to the Tech Tarik Show, Nawiyot.net's only official podcast. We're here recording this on a Tuesday afternoon because of... No, it is Tuesday, isn't it? It is Tuesday. It is Tuesday. I'm a bit mixed up. Anyway, I'm your host Farhan, and I have with me Pang and Chap. Hello. Hola. Sup? Pang is being very antisocial right now. Sorry. <laughs> We're all a bit busy yet. There are reasons. Somehow, maybe yeah. somehow, what it is they have been. <laughs> Tell me about it. Anyway, let's get started with the news. I am. I'm I exhausted. Also, oh, I'm yeah. trying something new here. I'm trying a little less energy, a bit smoother, something yeah. more relaxed. Trying an Andrew? No, no, Andrew's just angry. Okay. Really? He will hear about this later. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Sounds angry. Okay, anyway, the news. Um, what do we have? Well, let's we start on a local front. Uh, sure, let's start on a local front. Cool. You mobile just launched a new postpaid plan, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's now the third. It's now the third unlimited data plan that you can find in Malaysia. Oh, third? Yeah, third? so we started it first. Oh, yeah, okay. Unlimited data plan. Oh, right, right. Right, okay. The scene, yes, yes. Yes. So, then after that, it was DG, postpaid 80. So, think of it this way. It's uh, an unlimited plan with unlimited calls, unlimited data, uh, unlimited video ons, uh, which is their Thingy service chain. where, yeah, yeah, which is like a feature that they have for uh, viewing videos on Streaming videos, streaming videos, videos yes. on YouTube and several other a lot of Netflix, Netflix, yeah. Netflix, that kind of thing. Not yeah. on Facebook though. So anyway, um, for seventy eight ringgit a month, they, they have a new feature called uh, Roam Ons, which allows you to use. Uh, you have data allocated for you for free uh, in twelve countries. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's so nice it replaces idea. Data Backpack. Data Backpack lets you use your home uh, data plan uh, quota, and you can use it in twelve countries. Oh, that's it. 10 countries in, sure in selected countries. basically yeah in selected countries basically it's the same concept but because the P78 uh, the hero it's called the unlimited hero P78 plan mm-hmm. this plan uh, because it gives you unlimited data so they have to put a figure into your uh, room the room ones so you get either 5 or 8 gigs 8 gigs is only for the highest uh, i130 plan uh, but overall 78 ringgit a month it's the cheapest unlimited data plan you can find in Malaysia right now because Weeby is 79 <laughs> and oh, well. postpaid 80 is 80 ringgit. So, more or yes, less. Sure. More or less the same, but you know, 78 ringgit a month is 1 ringgit cheaper than the next but, month. But the way you explain it, it seems that you mobile have more advantage, more, more to offer, to be honest. Um, so, so some yeah, so really feel that way. It's because the roaming, the, the I mean, roaming, and the other one is uh, free mobile hotspot. Oh, well, you can okay. use to teeter your phone. <laughs> Uh, as a mobile hotspot to any devices, There's but there. you can't use it as a MiFi. So it's ah. free. You can use it in, in a MiFi device. Oh, okay. you cannot but use it in yeah, the, law, the, the rule is that you can only use it on the smartphone. Okay. Right? It doesn't matter. 10 gigs Sounds a good. month. 10 uh, gigs a month. 10 gigs a month for free. Uh, at the same connection speed as the standard line. So if you think about it, it's unlimited data, unlimited calls. It's really open for abuse. We're Malaysians. We're going to abuse this. So it sounds familiar. We've had this conversation. <laughs> yeah, this conversation. We have, because we had it with uh, the Cellcom also. What? Yeah, you it's mean the one... Borong Internet, Borong No, it? sorry, it's at once. At once. Where yeah, yeah. Using oh Facebook, yeah, at right? once because the Facebook uh, yeah. video. So yeah. it's open for yeah. abuse. Uh, so what Yomawa has done is uh, it's capped the connection speed for the Yomawa Unlimited Hero P78 plan <laughs> at 5 Mbps. Five MVPS? Five MVPS. For the hotspot? <clears throat> your entire connection is five. Is capped at five MVPS. So that means that your hotspot is basically following your connection. Five. So your phone five. connection itself is five max? It's yes. stuck at five. It's capped at five MVPS. What? No. Then what's the point of having yeah, fast... 4G, what's the point? Can I just check, like, what was the speed cap for Weepy? Like, the, not, they don't have a cap, but they're using... They don't have a cap. Yeah. But in general, if you speed test it... You will get roughly um, a bit more. 
Oh, that? A bit. Okay. But it's not far off. I think it's like maybe, uh, when we first tested around 10 to 12. Yeah. But I think it slightly increased a bit. Uh, but it pretty much depends on where, where you are, right? I remember that yeah. speed test. But if you're did. capped at 5, come yeah. on. What's the point of having 4G? But if universal cap at 5, yeah. LTE is like. F- the you LTE is theoretical fast. speed cap 4 is 75 Mbps. Exactly. Yeah. Um, even, so you're saying even no, when you can't L- have any of that. Even when LTE first appeared in Malaysia, uh, we we see like theoretical speed was forty two, but we can already see twenty, uh, 20 yeah, you yeah. Know, like more than ten. So at the end of the day, it's like it's this is how they're they're making sure that it's you can't abuse it. You can't abuse it. So they are making this. They they're, they're not making saying this re, uh, in public, but like this is five mps. The idea is that you never have to worry about using up your data yeah because at 5 mbps you will <laughs> never use exactly. it no no 5 mbps actually it's um it actually allows you to do other things uh, video ons also comes as unlimited there's unlimited quota for video ons yeah but that's always been the case yeah uh depends on which plan you want so, so is that also capped at five no they're capped at dvd resolution so that's what happened with the p what does that even mean your resolutions cap at 480p dvd is DVD's resolution. That, that's resolution. what you're telling me is 5 Mbps because that's all you're going to be showing. Pretty much. But uh, the previous plan also, if you have unlimited video ads, it's capped at 480p. Um, I mean, that, that, that was something that I think they did yeah. with uh, T-Mobile. So, like, they, they basically took inspiration from T-Mobile to have this kind of video streaming thing for free and unlimited but you're capped at a certain resolution. 480p in this world. Uh, the idea is that you are using this uh, on your smartphone so uh-huh. you don't need super sharp resolution. That's true. Don't you? I don't know. Don't you? I have a, I don't I have think a, I don't I have a full HD screen now. So exactly. everything feels like... Mm. But 480p, to be fair, yeah, come like, on. It doesn't, it doesn't feel that much different from like... <laughs> but yeah, I mean, HD it's quite small. Yes. So that was the idea behind it. So I'm, I'm really... I'm still... I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> do it, excuse me, because I'm still shocked of hearing of this 5 Mac universal you and me both yeah you know universal Universal limit uh, universal cap that was really really surprising on the other hand i don't know whether 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 what i said earlier whether this have better value than we be not sure whether that still (laughs) holds yeah i mean we be it depends on what like so the idea for this plan what they are trying to sell uh is simplicity and the fact that you never have to worry about anything whether it's running out of data or whether you're spending too much on calls so i get where they're coming from yeah who exactly is this targeted at for people who actually want data actually um and you gotta like who want a lot of data but don't want to watch movies at 1080p uh this is a very specific subsection of the public you're talking they don't have add-ons as well it doesn't have add-ons no no add-ons so you can't Use your uh, data to watch, like uh, to go on Facebook. And but yeah, but, it's but you got unlimited like, data, so you don't. Really, it's not a big deal. Yeah. So, so that's the thing. Like, there are some trade offs here and there. That's a lot of trade offs. Um, <laughs> <it's laughs> if I'm not wrong, DG's postpaid eighty is not available anymore. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's no. They didn't stop that. That's a they weird, stopped that because that's what really I feel really because like, that was being is, abused. Yes. So I feel like what happened was that they weren't prepared for. I, what was to come when <laughs> give, uh, I, I think they were very optimistic about how people were going, uh, going to use <laughs> what they were offering maybe they just you know take all the complaints from people that are uh, being criticised Weeby and you know oh let's let's try whether we can do it then yeah Whoops. I mean so we've I've said this like for the past two years actually I, I mentioned that the next step for this company the telcos the next plan that's going to come up is they're just going to it's data, yeah, yeah. data. And but then eventually it's going to come to your point where you actually pay for data. Yeah. <laughs> it, not necessarily. Like, but I've heard you know, TM is talking about, you know, yeah. that's where you're going to end up. Yeah. Which kind of makes more sense when you reach the point of unlimited data. We don't want to cap you, we're just going to charge you for whatever you use. I mean, in the end, yeah, it's just like, you know, we give option to you. Do you want unlimited but with certain barriers or you want it, you pay for it but you get an awesome, excellent speed. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, but that's always the case at the end of the day. Like, what, what, what kind of, what are you prioritizing? Because U Mobile from the start has always been about offering the most affordable and best value for money plans. Mm-hmm. So with this, you have the P seventy eight. They also launched the P thirty eight and P forty eight like last week or the past two weeks. Mm-hmm. 
Those plans are like 38 ringgit and 48 ringgit. 38 ringgit gives you 4 gigs of high speed data, plus I think no video ons, plus app ons, music ons. That's all. Uh, P48 gives you video ons, 5 gigs of video ons, and unlimited app ons and music ons, plus four, 5 gigs of data. That, and unlimited that, calls. So those that's two plans, pretty good. Yeah, those two plans come with unlimited calls. So they're positioning themselves as like unlimited everything mm -hmm. uh, and their plans are moving forward that's going to have like this kind of this kind of uh, proposition you have unlimited calls unlimited tax so far so the P78 plan you still have to pay for tax 3 cents who, who to sends mobile tax numbers anyhow. yeah exactly so okay, no, no, nobody cares <laughs> 3 cents for you mobile numbers okay. and 8 cents to other networks that's I have to put it out um, tell you what in the next month <laughs> if I send a text I will let you know Sometimes you just need it, you know, as emergency managers. Yeah, so, okay, let me, let me, let me bring it up. I'm, I'm going to bring up this one, the Postpaid 80. Postpaid 80? Also capped at 500 PS. For DG? DG Postpaid uh -huh. 80. Also, also capped it's at also five. capped at 80, what? at 500 PS. How, how did that get abused then? But yeah, how come they actually took it off immediately? They gave I, I free don't know. tutoring 5 gigs a month for 12 months. So. Yumoba is one upping that by giving double the amount of people. <laughs> okay. For like basically. Clearly, there's only one thing we can do now. We must begin taking bets for how long this is going to last. Oh, by the way, they're calling this is a limited time plan. There mm. we go. P78 is a limited time plan available for all existing and new customers for Yumoba um, for a limited time. And when yeah. we ask them, like, how, how long exactly is it, they don't have an answer because I think it is. To just talk. to make sure that to talk if to they realize that it's take it's hogging up too much network, like off the network, they're gonna stop the plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be fair, um, in terms of numbers, this is the best value plan you can find. I would say it is, but I do, I do that's agree. only because DG stopped putting out their plan. No, no, I mean okay. Weekly yeah, has that as well. But uh, I would say because uh, if me, uh, I, I would, because there's roaming in it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, and there's the uh, hotspot. Is actually not bad. It's the hotspot that really yeah, sells. Hotspot, uh, sorry, hotspot, <laughs> hotspot, hotspot, <laughs> hotspot, and the room, the roaming would sell it to me. Okay, yeah. so what happened was the Digi Postpaid eighty was removed. The offer was ended for the Infinite eighty. They, I think, they replaced it with the Postpaid eighty. Uh huh. So it, okay. it started with the Postpaid Infinite eighty, Postpaid Infinite one fifty. Wow. So one fifty is still on because yes. That is a lot of money to pay for unlimited data. Yes, There's no cap whatsoever. Uh, this one, Postpaid 80, you get 10 gigs of data and you get unlimited. Uh, so, sorry, sorry, say what makes sense? You get added data for weekends. So, sure. And you get unlimited calls or whatever. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, you get internet roll as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's not too bad. Yeah, no, I mean, 7 gigs of monthly internet, 3 gigs of weekend for them, all weekends throughout the month, so total 10 gigs. You can roll over up to 2 gigs every month. Mm -hmm. So this DG, what this DG is DG, DG Postpaid 80. So it's not the same as the DG Infinite 80. DG Infinite 80, yeah, the Infinite 80 was added. Added. So technically, <laughs> this one is still the cheapest Postpaid plan because the next cheapest option is the WeeVee Mobile, which is Postpaid plan. A whole one ringgit more expensive. Yes. I mean, what can you get with one ringgit? <laughs> uh, not much these days. <laughs> okay, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So yes. that is that. It's available starting today, 16th of May. Uh, and you can register it online and also if you walk into any U Bar store. Cool. Right. On a international front for the news, um, there have been rumors that America is going to expand their flight, the electronics ban in flight cabins. Oh no! So they're saying that these 10 countries that they're currently targeting is not effective. They are still worried. So for security reasons, they are looking into banning all electronics from cabins, from all flights coming from the Middle East and Europe. Great. Now it's Europe. <laughs> yes, Europe. all of Europe. Why? Why Europe? Actually, no, they've been making, like, I think it's probably because like, countries like Turkey is... Uh, it's so much, and also because, you know, you hear a lot of terror attacks going on yeah. in Europe. Okay. Um, in the, the, trucks being driven into pedestrians in France, in Germany, and I th that's probably got them a bit spooked. But yeah, they're expanding this entire problem to cover Europe, and it still doesn't make sense. 
the, the, the reason they're giving is still because people, uh, intelligence they gathered suggests that terrorists are, have found a way to turn laptop batteries into bombs. And that's why they don't want to keep you know, laptops out of the cabin. Because mm-hmm. if it blows up, it might take everybody out. Cool. Yeah. Unfortunately, if you put it in the cargo hold and it blows up you can't it's still the same right yes it's still the same problem you can't handle it which is and it's slightly worse because in the flight cabin you have the flight crew Mm -hmm. we have fire extinguishers which can put out lithium ion fires Mm -hmm. and in the cargo hold the plane's fire suppression system cannot really yes so it'll probably do more damage in the back that's the thing that's what i thought Mm. um but on the other hand Maybe because, you know, an airport, they have extra layer of security. Maybe they can, you know, another chance to detect such stuff. Yeah, you would assume so? I assume that. that that's really. just like, really? <laughs> so you just flew to the US yes, and you, just, you just experienced the, yes. the electronics ban first hand. First hand, yeah. yeah from was it as bad as you thought it would be? No, I was surprising. I was, I was uh, because the thing is, I'm not sure about any other uh, Middle Eastern airlines, but Amiris actually provide a service where you can check in your devices at the uh, at the door at the door where you, you know uh, I don't know what it's called again at the gate sorry yes at, at the, the gate right at the gate itself yeah, okay. yeah. it's um, in general I would say it's an organized chaos because you know these days everyone have their laptops their cameras their tablet, you know, yeah everything yeah, exactly and um, going and you have all, all sorts of people going to United States so you know sometimes in you um it's um kudos to the people at my race because they're very patient with everyone <laughs> you know like you know you have you you have people that so fussy about their stuff people who like uh, i don't want why should i blah 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 you know so uh, but in the end it's it's actually simple you know take your devices put inside of uh, they wrap it up in a bubble wrap they put it inside a box seal the box and uh tag it just the same uh, flight tag they use on your check-in bag and they just put it in one place then they just bring it to cargo hold so it's really simple and uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's really awesome to see my race doing that I'm not sure about other Middle Eastern airlines I, yeah. I don't know if other airlines are actually doing the same thing oh, they do. So, yeah. but this might become more commonplace if the ban is expanded exactly I mean it, who knows in the end like you know what United States does this why not everyone does this then it becomes troublesome for all of us yeah. so. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's not just the US that's doing this, to be, to be fair. Really? I yeah. mean, the UK has the same ban. Yeah. yeah. It covers different countries, but they have the similar ban. But on the other hand, this also teach me that, actually, because for the for the longest time, I always assume that you can't check in your laptop. Uh, so that's the thing. Because, you know... No, like, because a lot, of, a lot of airlines don't allow you to check in your laptop. Yeah. Yeah, because, because of the fire risk. Because the battery, you know. Yeah, yeah the fire risk. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so I was surprised that you can actually put it. And in fact, I tried it on the way back and put it. <laughs> And as you check in, one uh, I brought a spare laptop just in case. So uh-huh. I put it inside my bag, and it arrived safely <laughs> in KL. So yeah. Yeah, except that your 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 bag was checked by TSA. Yeah, that, that was interesting. Yeah, but of course, that's um, if you need to know about that, uh, you can ask me personally. <laughs> <later>. <laughs> I I first time found it. Uh, Pang actually have experienced it twice. So <laughs> just yeah. once actually. Just once with two just. bags. Uh, oh, you, oh, you mean with the, the letter? The, yeah, the TSA, the TSA letter. letter. It's actually by random, so I got I got it twice. Really by like random? Three years. It's by random. Because um, I've been to US a couple of times. This is my first time I ever see that letter inside my bag. Yeah. So. yeah, so it's probably a random check. Yeah. yeah. But Shows how often you go personally, to Personally, actually, I don't feel that it's random check for me because I have a robotic kit inside, uh, inside mm. my bag and also plenty of Starbucks tumblers. Yeah, if you go to Seattle, people was, kinda ask you to buy Starbucks. It was numbers. probably the Starbucks more than anything. Yeah, exactly. So that's a yeah. Thing. Okay, but yeah. So the band hasn't been expanded yet. It, Hopefully, it will it, not be expanded. It, <laughs> I think it might be, it's depending on the political climate in the US, which is going downhill very quickly. But yes, do we have anything else on the news? Uh, well. Qualcomm announced new processors. Well, Andy was supposed to talk about it, but he's kind of busy now. Yes, he, we are signing something very important. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we just found out. <laughs> so, yeah, what about these processors? They are mid-range processors. So it's the Snapdragon 660 and the 630. <laughs> 630. The processors, no, no. Yeah, there are two processors. Sorry. Like, yeah. He was supposed to talk about this, so now we, we're kind of like, oh, whoa, what's going on here? Yeah, so... <coughs> what's so the big deal? 
Let's now try to find Okay, it's a 630, not 635. 635 is going to come out soon, anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Uh, 660, 630. They are both going to be available on... Uh, you, you can expect to see them in smartphones from June 2017. Which is a lot sooner than we expect them to Correct. start appearing. Because I think what happened was that... I think what happened was that um, the previous generation ones, the 650, was actually a very high performance processor, but it was uh, one of the major complaints was that it was taking up too much battery. Basically, like because it was still it was not built on the. It, that was still on the. the there was still be a fourteen. Really. There was a fourteen nanometer chip because the new ones are the ten. No, are the, the new ones, the eight three five is the ten. So this okay. is still on the fourteen. I'm gonna assume that the the six fifty is a twenty eight. I'm so sorry because this is something that Andrew was supposed to talk. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, they are built on the. 40 nanometer process, which increased power efficiency. Uh, Qualcomm says that the six, they're talking about up to 30% more battery life, uh, two hours more on Snapdragon 660 on normal usage, an additional two hours of use. So uh, one, one observation I've made recently on all these new processes being announced yeah. is the gain is always about 30%. Yeah. Every single time you announce a new processor, you can, more or less say it's, it's about 30 percent not ex never exactly in terms but of around power efficiency yes uh, and performance increase 30 percent well. <laughs> it's always 30 percent you can set your watch to this announcement by now yeah and i guess it's is it because they're always aiming for 30 or is it because 30 is their most conservative estimate okay so the 660 uh has a 30 percent increase in performance in gpu performance 20% increase in CPU performance compared to the Snapdragon 652, 9653, which is the previous generation. Ones. Okay. So 20%. <laughs> mm, uh, not also, the first time that Qualcomm is using the custom cryo cores. So custom cryo cores are usually reserved for the Snapdragon 820, 800 series, which is the flagship level. So it's the first time that they're using their own cores instead of the uh, ARM, uh, ARM architectures. Fair enough, but I, I don't know what to say about this. I mean, yeah. They're interesting because they're new mid-range mobile chips. Yeah, so they also support Quick Charge 4.0, which uh, is also a new thing. Google's not going to be happy about minutes, that. Yeah, five minutes of charging gives you five hours of battery life. True. Also complies with both USB, uh, micro USB and USB Type-C standards. Uh, faster LTE speeds because it uses the new X12 LTE modem. Uh, and let's see, finally, they have Bluetooth 5.0 chips inside which gives you twice the speed at four times the range and it allows you to connect two devices at the same time for Bluetooth 5.0 Sure That's about it That's about it So mm -hmm. why is this significant? It's a mid-range processor So last year what we had was uh, so the next example that we can talk about is actually there's Redmi Note 3 from last year the Global Edition running yeah. on a Snapdragon 650 and it was designed as a mid-range proce uh, processor, right? So that phone was actually like 800 ringgit. Oh, no, you have to remember that. Remember, Qualcomm doesn't want us to refer to Snapdragon as processors anymore. Oh, fine. S system on the chip. Yeah, the system's on the chip now. They're so no longer processor. Oh, they've always been calling it that way, but... Yeah. Anyway, like, we're just going to call <laughs> so it that because it's, it's going to be It's supposed to be official. Fine. So, uh, Redmi Note 3 was... Uh, Actually, the best we can put it, it's Snapdragon 650 are mid-range processors, SOCs. <laughs> you could find them in devices <laughs> up to 2,000 ringgit last year. Okay. But of course, like, you know, Xiaomi went and spoiled the market and decided to come up with a Redmi Note 3 with the Snapdragon 650 for like 850 ringgit. That's not spoiling the market, that's making things good. It's making things good, but like it made everyone else look bad. Like all the other smartphone makers look bad. Yeah, fair enough. And the biggest like advantage of this uh, of the Redmi Note 3 was the fact that it was actually a very high performance uh, device. For its price, it was really, really good. So this is the 660, which is going to give you increased performance, better battery life overall. So if we're going to see this device, uh, this model, so it's going to be pretty good. Yeah, but are we going to see at the same price point now? Because Perhaps, I mean, it's, it's, day, it's, just, it's an incremental update anyway. So every year, they're just going to come out with like, and those chipsets are going to be cheaper. So we're going to see this in mid-range devices. It's a mid-range chipset anyway, and Xiaomi's always been a 
Okay, I, I assume that yeah, we're going to be seeing this from Xiaomi, but what about the other the other manufacturers? I just... Yeah, one of the biggest uh, the criticism from last year was the Snapdragon six hundred and fifty. I think it was on this on a Sony Xperia X, which was designed as a flagship device for two thousand ringgit. If I'm not wrong, I remember <laughs> this. So everyone, like I remember, Andrew was really not happy about it. It's like, why is it a flagship processor and it's like six hundred and fifty? True enough, but yeah. it, it's a valid question. It is. It's uh, a valid but, question. The way that I think the way I see it is that the manufacturers get to choose uh, the chipsets that they want to put inside, and in terms of price to performance, the Snapdragon uh, the Snapdragon six fifty was actually a very good processor for its price, and I think they were kind of just like, oh, you know, we can put flagship level performance in uh, <laughs> and mask it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that means you're not getting flagship level performance anymore. You're just like. Yeah, I mean, hoping it's a nobody generation flagship process. It's known as hoping they don't notice. Yeah, and this is a problem because you know in the internet everyone knows what you're doing. I yeah, mean, come on, it's, if it's already six hundred series, you know what it is already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then that set up. Not to forget, actually, don't forget, like the Snapdragon six hundred was on a flagship smartphone before. It's not the Samsung Galaxy S four. I. Do that, not was, right, yes. that was but that's the 600 that was designed as a 600 series uh, flagship they actually designed the 600 series as a smartphone processor chipset mm-hmm. the 800 was for things like smart cars and stuff the which required more computing power and then what happened was that the smartphone makers like hey we can put this in a smartphone does he ask for it do you still even remember when you Galaxy S4 it's not that long ago not it was already 23 20... yes Three, four, fourteen, thirteen. That's three years ago. Well, that's not too bad actually. S seven last year. Yeah, so that's the the history. Of that's it. not too bad. <laughs> yeah, but that's so that's the new <laughs> Qualcomm <laughs> Snapdragon. Yes, new range. Yeah. S O C. Yes. Yes. S O C. It's no longer processor. Ah. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> what else do we have? So uh, I think we're out of time for the news. We spent a lot of time on just three items. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, they're kind of big. To be they sorry. are quite big. Um. But we're going to take a short break and then we're going to be back with Chapri telling us stories from Microsoft Bill and why he was searched by the TSA. <laughs> Hashtag bro <brochure. laughs> Right, so we're back. Um, Pang stepped away for a second because of important things. <laughs> but I'm still here with Chap who... Got back from build over the weekend. Yeah, build over the weekend. You mean no, over you, the past week? <laughs> you got back over the weekend. Yeah. Just, so not even a weekend. Yeah. Yesterday, back actually. Yeah. So what was the big deal with build this year? Build. Uh, well, that's it depends because uh, if you've been uh, if you guys been following our site and everything, you know that Microsoft build is called Microsoft Build Developer Conference for a good reason because it is the he- developers heavy event. But uh, this year it seems that we have couple of uh, interesting. They they have couple of interesting announcement for consumers that actually related to consumers. Uh, we just, for this for this episode we're just gonna touch one of it, which is actually Windows 10 for creators update. Yeah. yeah. So what's the big deal now? So we've just received the creators update last month. Exactly. Right. The the first one for this year. Yeah. So then next one is uh, code name uh, Redstone Three. Yep. Uh, well, the name is that really, you know, really give impression when it's coming out during fall. Yeah. So that's just did, are they now moving to like the two major updates a year? Mm, uh, they they didn't confirm that. So, okay. Yeah, but they just say that. Uh, well, this is your next big update. So I mean, I mean, to be honest, like the creators update was actually announced at last, last year. year. Last year. Yeah, it was announced. But it was year. like nine months before we got that update. Exactly. Right. It was a very and long time. I mean, they they show it. Gradually, or yeah, bit by bit, Windows Insider. The same case holds true, uh, because, uh, for example, one of the biggest thing that will come from Fall Creators Update is the new, uh, the new design language for the Windows Ten, you know, it's mm-hmm. a Microsoft Fluent Design System, okay. or previously known as Project Neon. What so, is this? What does that even mean? Yeah, it's it's pretty much a, a new interface. Okay. But um, they been they the way that Microsoft been telling everyone is that okay here's the thing it's not like a sudden up sudden change mm-hmm. it will be introduced gradually though and in fact the way that they describe it is a journey right a, a, a journey 
Oh, like, so th- what, what they're essentially saying is they're going to give us incremental updates yes. to the point that we don't recognize Windows by the time they're done. I, I think the, because they showed the concept, Windows, everything. Okay. It's, it's, everyone, it's, it's still Windows. But okay. it's a nicer looking Windows. If you ask me, it's a nicer looking Windows. But on the, apart from the, you know, the aesthetic parts, the, one of the adjectives of having this new design language because they want the Windows 10 to adapt to the new input. The input method, a lot of input methods what like my new touch, input method, like touch, touch in, you know, they, w- they want to make it like so that this n- this newer input method uh, is integrated more seamlessly inside the operating system. This sounds like they're trying to reinvent Windows Eight, right? <laughs> do, you, do you remember Windows Eight when it redesigned the start menu for yeah, touch? But unfortunately, yeah, that's but fortunately, that's not they won't. At least that's not what they're doing. You know, they're not touching that anymore. But I hope not. not. Yeah, I hope not. But the demo, the demonstration they showed at bit was actually um, one of it was actually with ink, okay. you know, so that they show like how the ink work faster, work more seamlessly, you know. But is is ink really going to be? Are there enough people using ink? I'm not that too, you, exactly. Uh, yeah. I'm not too sure myself. Are there enough but people using ink to actually justify you moving in this direction, mm-hmm. or are you just like uh, trying to be Apple and shove them in that direction? But I think they they think it that way anyway because. This is the second time we see a creators oriented. Yeah, update. it is, isn't it? You know, like because the big change for ink happened during the creators update. The first creators update. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right, because they have like dedicated ink ink space and everything. So, yeah, uh, I, I would say why not? Because they happen. Uh, because creators doesn't mean, you know, professionals alone. You know, they could be. Uh, they also like thinking of kids. That's why they have the Windows. Remember the Windows Ten Education. You oh know? yeah. Yeah, yeah you know yeah. And so, in, so even at build, they have a uh, you know sessions for that targeted education. That's that's basically where I got a robotic kit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. But that story for other time. But, but anyway, for the other uh, apart from the new design uh, language for Windows, they also um, showcase a couple of new features that will come with the for creators update. One of it they call timeline. It's a new view. Okay. Yeah, which um, they say that users able to go back in time to work on files or visit websites that they're already working on. It's, what, it's what, a very what? weird. It's a very weird description. So, uh, but it's uh, visually, visually it really have a timeline where you can drag and see what you've been working on. Well, you can see the changes that. Yeah, you made. exactly. You can see the changes. So it is just just. Um, using like the annotation method and just dragging it out into something more visual exactly, where it, yeah. you know you can see your edits yeah so in a way that's how it is at least from the way I understand because like I said the explanation was like the description was like uh, hmm. well I, I can see where this is great for professionals mm-hmm. where they have to like go back and make maybe track yeah. down a change they make somewhere down the line yeah. but um, a part of uh, another new feature they also included uh, you know together with the fault creators update which actually is still related to timeline is uh, something they dis- the, the basically is straightforward they call it now pick up where you left off so basically from if you work on the document on the windows then you have to leave okay. then you can continue your work on your I- ios or android devices so this is but integration one, cloud. But one thing right. you need cortana to be on all devices because it's connected via cortana so how does that work for us in Malaysia who don't have Cortana? Oh, well, you we just change the language. <laughs> we, we just can't use it then. We can. I mean, you you know the trick. You just change your language. You, you, you change, change your settings, yeah. Yeah, just change but your settings. But still, I mean, because Cortana is not in every country. Exactly. And so you're developing, you're now developing features that not everyone is going to have. But surprisingly that the Cortana language is, you know, growing as we... Yeah, it is, know. but... Eventually, you know, eventually, I I suppose it is, and people that really want Cortana can actually just turn yeah, it on. Yeah, you can anyway. turn it on. I, yeah, I, it's it's an open. It's secret. difficult to uh, to imagine that Microsoft is building all these, and the sitting there and engineers are saying, yeah, if they really want to use these features, they're going to find a way. Yeah. Instead of saying, maybe we should make it easy for everyone to use these features exactly. to the beginning. Yeah, but uh, I would say that for this particular feature, we're picking up things where you level off. Yeah. They need a point of reference, and since Cortana is inter-platform because you have Cortana yeah, so for iOS and everywhere Android. right yeah so I think it's a very good so at least it's a good reference point rather than what are the you know the weird ways of the weird ways of whatever Microsoft had did in the past 
Right. Yeah, so I suppose to say, I don't know, OneDrive, which is also on cross-platform? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> There's a new features on OneDrive also uh, that will be part of the four creators update since mm-hmm. now you mentioned it. it actually uh, allows users to choose whether they want the file to be constantly in, uh, they want you want uh, cloud only files. Basically I, like you, you when you uh, use the file only your your disk space will not be uh, affected. Basically you totally work online. Yeah. That makes sense. I I can see where they're going with that for like all these like Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, it's not it's not supposed to be something new, just that they remove it from Windows Ten. Uh, okay, mm. I I understand what's going like the pseudo Chromebooks that they're trying to yeah, push from exactly, Acer yeah. and all that. So, I can see those existing quite easily. Mm-hmm. Why they didn't exist before, I don't know. Yeah, it exists before. Uh, it was always referred to as the OneDrive placeholder. <laughs> that was an awful name. Yeah, it's it's not an awful name, but it's just a term that the yeah. OneDrive users call it. That was. Another feature from the new update that I think everyone would would actually uh, appreciate is you can actually copy paste contents between devices, inter platform devices. Let's say okay. uh, yes. Let's say you copy something from Windows and you want to paste it in Android. How does that even work? Yeah, I if I'm not mistaken. I couldn't remember because so there's a that, lot of things that went. Yeah, but that, that would that would say require a, a shared clipboard, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's it's something like that. Yes. Wow. But they, basically, they refer it as a new clipboard. That yeah, regardless whether you're on PC or on your smartphone, you can just copy the contents or huh. vice versa. The, I'm pretty sure you. It's something to do with Cortana as well. It sounds like it's Cortana. Yeah. Or at least one drive at some point. No. One of those two probably have to play a part. Exactly. So that, that's the thing. So yeah, um, in general, that's that's the big features for the upcoming Fall Creators update. So uh, yeah, that that's just a tiny part of cool. um, of Microsoft Bit Dev Company. They also have mixed reality uh, motion controller. Yeah, we have got all the news on the yeah. side. Oh, and also the new um, Windows 10 Story Remix, the new app. Okay. Which is basically a very very uh, awesome video editor, video and uh, I'm not sure about image, but it's it, the way they demonstrate on stage. It looks like a very awesome video editor, pretty I much a very good uh, replacement for the Windows Movie Maker. But Windows Movie Maker is quite solid already. Yeah, but, but this time you like you can have a three D effect, which actually like you, which actually adapt to whatever story you make like. Huh. For the the demo they show on stage, they show the clip where the they take the three D object of framing and put it on the ball, okay. and then the three D object move together with the ball. Then there's another three D object at the goalpost. Uh, once the ball hit that, then it blow up. Nice. So it was like really, really like you. It's it seems like it's it's it looks quite simple to use, but. Huh. Uh, I, I guess that's just, that's something that I, I just hope I just hope it doesn't end up like three D paint. Three D paint. It's basically the whole circle. Yeah, because you build stuff on three D paint. You throw it into yeah, the because three D three D paint was a bit disappointing. I was talking to my girlfriend who's a graphic designer, mm-hmm. and she's saying that three uh, D paint sounds like good, but it's so limited that you can't really build many things. And, and that's it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So so uh, that's a that's an opinion from professionals. Yeah. Well. So, uh, but I guess that because obviously you, you know, professionals do more things, you know, yeah, they, that, they, that, that, the paint 3D is a very basic, like give you an idea of uh, the three axes and things like that. If yeah. you, if you like, like school kids, you'll be like, oh, so this is how the it's idea of 3D and everything. Yeah, I, yeah. I suppose that's, that's one, it's probably introduction but to 3D. From what you build on, what you create on paint 3D, yep. you can put it in Remix 3D, mm-hmm. the community, and then that's where the new story Remix take the 3D item and put it there. And the 3D item, you don't need, don't even need to take the whole 3D thing, you can take elements from it nice. and adopt it. So, in a way, so that's basically, that's how they show on stage. I don't know, like you said, we never know until it actually arrives in our hands. But if you're on Windows inside the program, you can actually already try to use it. So this is turning up on in fall. We're not sure when in fall. Yeah, that's the final fall version. Fall is in autumn. Yeah. So I the final version we don't know, but if you're on Windows Insider, if you dare enough to use it, they're already there. So sure. yeah. Um. So of course, uh, if you're deaf, then 
you know that uh, there's new uh, connective services, there new additive cards. If you a developer on Mac, there's new the Visual Studio for Mac finally goes official, and you can if you uh, Mac if you iOS dev but you love Windows PC more, there's Xamarin Live Player that which allows you to do that on you know build iOS app on yeah. Windows PC. Sure, that's yeah. So that's going to be useful. Exactly, and uh, for dev, Microsoft probably talking about a lot of uh, edge computing. You mm-hmm. know, so. Edge computing is not Microsoft Edge, but uh, they refer to uh, cloud capability on IoT devices itself. So it is a very, very long, very, very long and very technical topic. Maybe we can save it for other time and save for some other article. But yeah, for us normal mortal consumers, <laughs> Windows 10 for latest update and to a certain extent, the mixed reality motion controller is pretty much what we look, what we really look at. And of course, if you really love iTunes, not not for many hours, iTunes is coming to Windows Store. So yeah, that's no big deal because you could always install iTunes on Windows yeah, machines anyway. Exactly, but if you're running on Windows 10 S, <laughs> gee, really? All right. All right, let's let's end that there before we get into <laughs> Windows 10 S. Yeah, so that was the uh, part of what happened in Windows at Microsoft Build. Next, we're going to news that kind of came up in the middle of recording this podcast and we decided to throw it in anyway. So we'll be right back. Right, so this I'm just back. came up. Yes, Fang <laughs> is back. He had to step away because this news came up right in the middle of the podcast. Yes. <laughs> so, HCC has a new phone. Very good. Well, we knew about this because they were they announced that launch was happening today, and uh, we've just got information about this phone. And to be honest, I think this was the phone that they've been wanting to release, but <coughs> instead we got the U and U U Ultra and the U. They're the one we don't talk about. <laughs> yes, I, uh, I really love the fact that you say this phone to release this. <laughs> no, it's true because this phone. Okay, wait, 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 before we get there, what's it called? It's called the HTC U Eleven. You and it looks like the phone that they are that is the 2017 flagship huh see one of the problems that's that we, a flagship one phone. of the things that we mentioned when we talked about U-Ultra was the fact that the hardware was a little bit too 2016 uh-huh. boring ideas it, from why is it 2016 again it's a Snapdragon 821 All right. it's 4 gigs of RAM it's like the hardware is RAM. just not really there I agree with that I agree with that okay. HCC U11 is the much better version of the U Ultra. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let me start with a little bit of things. So they, they, they kept talking a lot about this new method of interaction or that. We're going to get there later. We're going to talk about the new phone. It uses the same design language as the previous U series. Uh, it's called Liquid Surface. So it uses What's glass and metal. So it's really glossy at the back. Um, yeah, it's I, very dif- different from the HTC. I've said this many times. I hate glossy back phones. Yeah, yeah same here. but you know yeah. it's the same problem with this right now. Like I'm using a metal back phone and it's really slippery. If I've never had the problem with metal back. What? Uh, anyway, no. I, I think <laughs> when it comes to slippery and all, it's coating. But in terms yeah. of the actual finish, I really hate the glossy. Yeah, metal. Metal is just so much nicer to hold. Yeah, yeah. but glass so much gives, nicer it, to gives you more grip. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So besides the the body, it's changed. Um, it runs on a Snapdragon eight three five, twenty seventeen flagship. About um, time. Two variants: four gigs of RAM with sixty four gigs of storage, oh. or six gigs of RAM with one hundred twenty eight gigs of storage. Again, oh. twenty seventeen model. I mean, some phones in twenty sixteen have this, but HTC has finally come up, like finally kept up in hard, in terms of hardware. <laughs> yeah, they're only three months late. <laughs> it's in May. It but late? I'll tell you this: it's coming in June. Yeah. Coming June, June, June. Four months late, Global sure. Um, coming to Malaysia as well. Uh, it uses so let me let me let me just run through the the new specifications. Just, just I'm just gonna basic keep the camera later because it seems like a very interesting part. Um, it's gonna be available globally. There will be four digital assistants that you can choose from. Wow. Okay. Uh, one of them is obviously only gonna be in China because it's called the Baidu Duer OS. Okay, that's the one that's spying on yeah, you. So what? The conversational AI OS for. Well, call that's the one that's spying on you. So why call digital <laughs> assistant when it's called OS? I don't know. Okay, that's weird. <laughs> China, China, man. Whatever. Yeah. Anyway, so that. But 
everywhere else you get to choose well I don't think everywhere else because Alexa is only in the Alexa is only in the US Alexa is a US so based thing officially to yeah. Google Assistant Amazon Alexa and HCC's own uh, Sense Companion which they introduced mm. in the Uplay so uh, in Malaysia we generally get two, two. then <laughs> great <laughs> you don't really want Baidu anyway right and you can't use Alexa because there's no point to it also because you can try sell you something <clears throat> Probably. <laughs> Actually, no, they don't really. Anyway, UFS 2.1, uh, Gigabit LTE because of the Snapdragon processor. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, you, it's only got a 3000 milliamp hour battery. That is the biggest drawback of this phone. And no, his, uh, no 3.5 millimeter jack. Huh? Oh, they're doing that too? No, yes. no jack. What is, the no, ro- no what is jack. wrong with you people? They started it with the HTC Uplay. So what they did was that they bundled a pair of USB Type-C earphones. Oh, okay. These earphones, they're called U-Sound. Uh, which was announced with the Uplay, uh, U-Ultra but mm-hmm. now they've added ANC, Active Noise Cancelling into the U-Sonic ah, right. uh, okay. U-Sonic, sorry, the U-Sonic uh, earphones still, no headphone and check us- and, and using USB-C, right? USB-C, yes uh, <laughs> now that we've covered all of those I don't think we have anything else Boom Sound Hi-Fi Edition speakers Okay. No, I no, 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 just name, <laughs> Nobody uh, cares. 3D recording because of four mics. Uh, okay. yeah, four but mics. they've had that before. Yes. Uh, there's also a USB C to 3.5 millimeter jack adapter. Sorry. It, the adapter, yes, I noticed it. The adapter said that is the adapter itself come with a built in DAC. Yes, it's a DAC inside the adapter. Huh. Well, okay, yeah. That's oh, not bad. Hold on, that means that the that but okay. I'm now I'm a bit confused. The headset. This is a USB Type C headset. The, the headset is USB Type C, and so at maybe the same I don't think it has a DSC headset. So then they have a, a and adapt- at the same time they have an adapter for a other three. In case device. you want to use huh. your own headphones. Yeah, oh, that's, that's that's smart. Actually. That's good value. Really. That's yeah, so that anyway, five point five inch quad HD display with three D glass. So basically, it's curved, not curved to the point where it's curved. It's just the glass is curved. Curved, off. as usual. Um, IP sixty eight. Oh, so essentially that's... everything you want from a modern smartphone. Nice, a liquid nice. glass surface. So uh, <laughs> sure, okay. Shiny, shiny. So what's this big deal about the camera? That yeah, you're the camera. Uh, DxO Mark, the independent rating system for smartphone cameras, has given it a score of ninety <laughs> out of one hundred, which puts it actually among the top smartphone sensors. Mind you, the HTC 10 last year, if I'm not wrong, scored an 87. This was quite good. This point is just points. Quite good. How did the one with the, those uh, U devices earlier this year, how about... Uh, I know one of those scored an 91. I can't remember whether it was oh. the Galaxy S8 or the Huawei because I don't think the Huawei scored that high. No, no, <laughs> I mean, the iPhone 7 Plus. I, I mean the U series itself. The, the HTC yeah, two U series. If I'm not wrong, it's about here as well. So it's, ah. it's, they generally the phones are really good. But the camera on this phone is very different from the U Ultra. Where the U Ultra was a uh, box standard 16 megapixel or something like that, like yeah. it wasn't great. Like uh, Andrew was using it and he didn't like it. It was slow and sluggish. <laughs> this thing is all different. So it now has multi axis optical stabilization. It has auto HDR boost with that gives you all the benefits of HDR without the lag. Uh, let's see, enhances. Colors, visible details, and brings out the best in every shot. This is I'm just reading from the press release anyway. Uh, for videos, they have something called temporal noise reduction, which uses information from the previous and next frames to reduce noise. I don't know how that works. More, li- more, that- li- more likely, it's software stuff. What I'm very curious about is something called ultra speed autofocus. Hmm. Right, because this reminds me that you you. Autofocus is a big deal for you. Autofocus is a big deal for smartphone cameras in general. So for the longest time, Samsung has, uh, since the S7 series, they come out with something called dual pixel technology, which basically splits each pixel into two sub-pixels, one for light and one for information to, uh, to set focus, basically. I have this technical stuff, I'm just going to put it very easily. Anyway. <laughs> uh, they don't say anything about this, but they seem to be very confident. They say that this technology is found in top DSLR cameras, uh, which gives you super fast autofocus. I'm sure. very curious how this works because up until this point, Samsung's version, Samsung's dual pixel technology is still the fastest autofocus in all smartphone cameras we've seen so far. I'm, I would be more curious to know if it works. Yeah, so 
Uh, we don't have the device. Also. Yeah, we're, we're not it's at launch. It's just announced at a global, in global We're uh, reading global from a press release. It sounds great. Um, it sounds great. And it has optical and electronic stabilization. Mm -hmm. uh, on the front, it has a 16 megapixel camera with ultra pixel light sensitivity. Really? And it has HDR boost on the front camera. Well. Okay. What's so it? all in all, you're talking about a very modern smartphone that's coming from a company that we didn't expect to come up with anymore. <laughs> Which is why I think we're quite excited about this. Uh, it looks but by we, you mean you, right? Uh, no, Andrew's actually even more excited. It's more than I'm yeah. just reading a press release. And Andrew's a different story here. Yeah, he's, he's going crazy on our group chat right now. But like, it does actually look like a decent phone. Like, uh, HCC Sense has also been, uh, that's a software skin, I mean, the Android skin has been uh, very good for the longest time. Uh, mm -hmm. I've actually enjoyed using HTC Sense for a long time. And now it has Google Assistant, if you want. Uh, My only question in this thing is, <laughs> why now? I think they probably... Oh, sorry, we forgot completely about the other part. <laughs> there, there's another part. Yes. No, but still. That, 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 that thing, the, the, the Oh yeah, the squeezing... So, squeezing, that's, that's squeezing the action? Things. Yeah, so they are saying that it's just, this feature is called HTC H sense. H sense. Yes. Squeeze phone to launch. So features. the lower half of the phone of the frame, where you usually have your hands, where you should put your phone. Yeah, where okay. your hands where you How you're, you're, you're holding phone, it. Yes. yes. Lets you interact with the phone in a different way. So you, in the in the software, you can you can you can uh, set how strong you want this grip to be to what? detect a, a an interaction. Okay. You can set it. For example, you can. This squeeze gesture, one squeeze can be opening an app. One squeeze. A long squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. Let, no, me, no, let me just finish this, okay? Then you can have a short squeeze, <laughs> as well as a squeeze and hold. That's another gesture. Sorry, all, okay, all I have no of, idea. All, all kind of I have no idea how you're going to get through a, a, a you know, announcement with this language. Yes. I'm sorry, but yeah. yeah. Um, essentially, what you can do is it opens up another way of interacting with the phone. So there's something called HTC Edge Sense for voice to text. So, for example, when you have a text, <laughs> don't be so wait, wait. That. <laughs> so wait, wait. if you get a text, you have to squeeze the phone, <laughs> squeeze and it, and <laughs> talk to the phone, and it dictates. Oh, squeeze it <laughs> so you can talk to the phone and dictate. Okay, interesting. But sorry. Oh, um, what else you can do? Um, so you can actually space. with this you can uh, open up, you can open up apps, you can open up camera, take photos. Okay. So the idea is that, for example, this is using pressure. Yes. It is not using capacitive touch, or for example, in cold weather or when it rains. Mm -hmm. um, we would appreciate this because we live in a tropical country. Cold weather when you're wearing gloves. Oh, this yes. gives you another way of interacting with the phone without tapping, Tracking, taking off yeah. your gloves and tapping the screen. Uh, but he, he, I'm, I'm kind of interested how they actually implement the feature because you know, um, is the um for this you or you you devices are the body made from metal or the plastic? frame is metal. metal. So the frame, like, it's just probably got sensor in there to so yeah, detect force. Probably a sensor to detect like how much pressure is in. Um, you're like, applying you're like, on the screen. So like how there, are several levels, the too, yeah. there are several levels where you can set when you're setting up a few levels of pressure sensitivity. So what you're comfortable with so that you don't accidentally Th this, this is going to become a problem when you hand it to a friend and he hold, and he's scared of dropping it and he holds <laughs> yeah. really hard yeah. and God knows what he's going to launch. On, uh, whatever, uh, There's a lot of things you can talk about this. You yeah, <laughs> still. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah. We really need to get our hands on this one. And basically right now everyone in the room are holding their phone and trying to squeeze their phone, see how it feels. Yeah, very much. It's a bit <laughs> odd. So, but still, that doesn't answer my question. Why now? <clears throat> Why now? I feel yeah. like... I think they knew that the U-Ultra was not a good phone. But they needed a phone to be released. To have a different, different feature, I guess. So, the U-Ultra was their... The gimmicky feature was a dual screen, yeah. a second screen at the top. Yeah, that was screen. rubbish. Uh, LG did it once, didn't work. HCC now tried and thought it was a good idea. I don't think it's working work. as well. Mm -hmm. So I think they've been developing this technology for a while. It's just that I don't think they were able to get it out in time. Okay. It's all speculation at this point, but I feel like 
this is the phone that they wanted to launch at MWC, but mm-hmm. they just didn't have time. It wasn't done in time. And they show the dual screen phone instead. The dual screen <laughs> phone was shown in uh, CES actually. Oh yeah, CES, yeah. my bad. Yeah. Yeah, CES. It's just that they, ne- they didn't have a flagship phone after the HTC 10, which is in the middle of last year. Mm-hmm. So this is around the same time that they launched the HTC 10. I, I would say maybe this uh, in general sense of thing this is much more worth the money compared to the one yeah so what, what's, the, what's the one with the worst screen thing called U Ultra U, U Ultra yes U yeah. Ultra. Yeah. so the U Ultra has had a drop, price drop a global price drop of 150 US dollars in Malaysia it went down 500 ringgit it's not bad 400 or 500 yeah. Four, I think it was 2499 now so it's 500 mm. ringgit mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. it is going to be available in four colours silver blue Black? Oh, it's five cards, sorry. Yeah. Silver, blue, black, white, and something called solar red. Solar red? Red, quite sure. Nice. Red is uh, a, it's the in thing right and now. Apparently, uh, global availability is going to be from June, which is in two weeks. Malaysia, we are hearing that it might be coming in in the middle of June. Mm-hmm. And pricing, it says it is said to be around the same price as the U Ultra. Now, whether it is the same price as the U Ultra before or after the price drop, <laughs> oh, we don't know yet. So we're gonna have to wait until next month when HTC brings this to Malaysia. Well, we sure. definitely. I mean, obviously, all of us here are very curious about this squeeze thing. <laughs> squeeze thing. Not necessarily, but uh, what I see is it's now that I've had time to actually process this. I don't think it's actually a bad idea that they're launching it now. Because it's it's a relatively yeah, quiet period. Quiet period. Yeah. They, there's nobody to fight with. They've got All the practically the themselves. entire news cycle to themselves now. Yeah. Well, yeah. aside from you know the whole ransomware attack, but they, there's no <laughs> nothing else going yeah. on. They, they see, I say that it's been out and yeah, else? the hype. I say it's over yeah. because it's already yeah, out. And iPhone is way way later. So yeah. So they practically have the entire cycle. It's yeah. not a terrible idea, but I don't know. There's still a sense that it's a late. It's it a late comment. Well, the good thing is HCC has always been late. That's the general <laughs> consensus. Well, They've always been late to release their smart flagship smartphones. And but it's, it's coming to Malaysia next month. It's coming to Malaysia like globally. Like they're, they're releasing it around the same time as everyone else. Yep. Um, what is worth saying is the fact that HCC 10, even though a lot of people like it, didn't receive as much attention as the other phones from Samsung or Huawei or Apple. Uh, the critics actually liked the phone. Like for where, for what it was worth, like for what, uh, for what it had and everything, people actually didn't seem to like the phone. Sure, except that you know there was no hype for it. Yeah, there's just no hype for it. No hype. Because we came at a time when it was like a transitional phase between the the, the, the flagship smartphone from Samsung and then the iPhone. So yeah, it, it kind of got <coughs> caught yeah, in so that. So right that now, this is the point where they are launching it, which is around the same time as last year. So. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, it's an interesting move. Uh, I feel like this is the phone that they've been wanting to release. <laughs> I, I totally want to try out that squeeze thing. I don't know. I'm more, I'm more curious about the, the camera now. The camera here. Oh, well, it's, it's related. Apparently, you can use that squeeze thing to, to snap launch. a photo. Yeah. Not only launch, to snap a photo. Ah, I definitely want to try that. Going that's going to so be weird because it's going to really, it's going to cause... It's going to make your head just shake, right? Yeah. You, it kind of practice. <laughs> You're gonna get used to it eventually if you. Try so you have like hold it steady but squeeze with your fingers. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Selfie squeeze. Anyway. <laughs> no chop. No. Uh, <laughs> yes. Sorry. Uh, it's a four hundred ringgit cut for the U Ultra. It's two thousand six hundred. Okay. Two thousand five hundred ringgit. So expecting the we're expecting around the U eleven to be the same, three thousand ringgit mark around there. Yep. Next. Two, not not two, too bad at this point. 2K, 3K, yeah. So is that all we know about it for now? Pretty much. Great. There's a lot of things already. Yeah. That's not bad. Not bad. I guess we'll have to wait for it to appear. Um, yeah, so I guess we'll have to rush through our final story, <coughs> which was actually a big thing that happened over the weekend. <laughs> and more people than usual are finally talking about cybersecurity. It was the WannaCry ransomware attack that swept across the globe. To be honest, I don't know how many countries were affected because everyone seems to be reporting a different number. Yes, some so, said seventy-five thousand. That was the no. The so that you were talking about. seventy-five countries, one hundred countries, or two hundred countries. Yeah, I heard two hundred. I I seen all three numbers <laughs> and. Every time you see an update, it's got more countries added to the number. I'm assuming it's like one infection or two infections, nothing really major. Probably. 
So what's been happening over the week? Uh, what happened over the weekend is uh, a lot of major systems across Europe were affected by ransomware. It's a vi computer virus that gets on the computer, encrypts all your files, and demands you pay a ransom, or it will delete everything. So. Even if you remove the virus, all your files are encrypted. Yeah, so you can't get it out unless you make that payment. Yes. In fact, the funny thing about this WannaCry is, if you remove it before paying the ransom, you cannot apply the code oh, and you cannot get yeah. rid of it. Yeah, that which makes sense. Which was a problem for a lot of people. <laughs> so they're saying, well, if you're infected, don't remove it yet, just in case. Huh. <laughs> so weird. Yeah, this is a major problem. Yeah, but I think the, the other thing that we should talk about is like what devices were actually infected because it uses a vulnerability from, it's called SMBV1, right? So, so what yeah, it was... Keep going. Yeah, so it infected only Windows machines. Yeah. And it used a vulnerability in SMB. Uh, it's a file sharing system, Correct. which the this vo particular vulnerability was already known, it exists. Yeah. And it was leaked by a different group of hackers saying that, hey, the US NSA has been using this to spy on people. <sighs> this is one of their secret weapons yeah. for breaking into your systems. When the leak got out, Microsoft came up and said, um, we've already patched this. It's not a it's a known exploit. Everything's fine. That's for Windows ten and Windows seven. No what that was for every Windows that that's currently supported. supported. Sorry, yeah. Which is Windows 10? 10, 10, 10, 10 7, 8. Yep. Oh, 8, uh, sorry. I forgot about it. It's not even 7, it's 8. 7, seven, is, eight. seven yeah. is also, seven yeah. is also still, still supported. Still under support, yeah. So you're and still getting updates and stuff. At the time, Windows Vista was also still under support. Hmm. We, yeah, and it was weird, but oh, you Vista... Mean, no, actually, Vista was not... It was still okay. supported when they so issued you, the patch. Okay. Just so nobody bothered to patch it. means that the patch was already out for a very, very long time. Yes, it, does, it was patched. So everyone who's infected was on a Windows XP machine. Which is, you're talking about the larger organizations we have, which have a lot of trouble when you want to update stuff. Yes. So interestingly, uh, the, US, the uh, UK's National Health Service went down. Yeah. There's like, like 70 hospitals. <laughs> they, were, they started turning people away and said, hey, uh, we know you have an appointment for whatever is wrong. Just about it. don't show up. We, have, we cannot perform any x-rays, no scans, nothing, our hospital is shut down. Damn. Unless your life depends on it, don't show up here. That's crazy. Yeah, but it's not the first time we've targeted hospitals. Yeah, I guess it's, it's, I think you're talking about legacy systems that not only are not supported officially by Windows anymore, like Windows XP, but the larger great organizations have to, there's a lot of effort in patching large amount of devices at one go. It is. That was the problem, right? It's partially that and partially is to upgrade all your systems <laughs> means you have to leave a lot of software behind. Correct. Uh, but I think not so much the upgrading. It's like there was an emergency patch that Microsoft issued to all Windows XP devices. Yes, yeah, no, that's, that's Windows what XP and Windows Server 20, 23, 20, 2003, sorry. Yeah, anything before. Any anything that they, they, they no longer supported officially, they had actually rushed out a patch for all of these devices. Which they shouldn't have had to do in the first place <laughs> yeah. if everyone had been able to keep up. <laughs> yeah, but it was, I think it was, yeah, like I said, it was expensive to upgrade the devices. It's not necessarily the just the licenses. Device. Because the it, there's, there's more just than just the Windows being upgraded. Yeah. It's yes, Windows, and then there's all the proprietary software that you've yeah, been using it, before, yeah. which needs to be upgraded at the same time. It's really expensive to do these days. Correct. So, so that was the problem that came up. And, and now everyone's talking about malware. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. funny because like what happened then was that um, uh, for Malaysia, was there any confirmed cases? Uh, it's conflicting, conflicting information. I mean, the MCMC issued a statement saying, yeah. no, we haven't received any reports. On the other hand. But CSM said um, there were one or two, nothing major. CSM is cybersecurity. Cybersecurity, yeah. It's an NGO mm -hmm. whose job is to monitor. monitor all these things. And they also provide technical support saying, you know, how can we help you? Yeah. And they're saying we had they had one or two, which I guess was probably a small scale. Yeah, probably like the so far, systems, yeah. which like you know run by like our parents who probably didn't know better. Yeah, that's a funny thing. Everyone knows how it spread, yeah. but nobody knows how the infection started because the theory is it was a phishing campaign, but was nobody's been able to verify. Wasn't it like a like a 
an email thing where you open an uh, like a, an yeah that, this is a, that was a theory yeah of how it got in but nobody's actually been able to verify that oh, yet okay. they know how so it's so there's a chance that it's actually there you just have to open the executable executable file well the good news is even if you're infected now um, your, your patch you're safe right it's not necessarily patch it's they found a kill switch for it oh, oh right. yes someone Sorry, found that, a kill switch that was the thing yeah so that what was happened? a funny story actually no no, it wasn't funny story. It was just bad design. I think they designed it that way. Like that, they didn't seem to know what was like the intention when the guy was the, the researcher was looking through the code and, and trying to figure out what it was, why it was the kill switch there and stuff. No, no, he wasn't. He didn't know it was a kill switch. He was looking for the. the he was uh, examining the code. Yeah. And he noticed that WannaCry was reporting back to this one web address for yeah. instructions. And, and whenever he tried to visit that address, it showed that it wasn't registered. Yeah. No. I, I thought it was more like, if this website exists, uh, if it were, for as long as the website does not exist, it yeah. keeps spreading. Yes. So, so and it was like a random string of letters and numbers for that website. That yeah. Like so what he did was said, oh, hey, I'll <laughs> buy it. I'll buy it. Maybe I can see. I can track it back. Yeah. And once he bought it, it, it killed everything. everything. Yeah. It's pretty interesting how that works. But it's it's a very clever thing from the, <laughs> from the hackers how they created it. I don't know, like, uh, what was I saying? Oh, actually, I, found, I read this really interesting, stupid thing yesterday. Um, the UK media uh-huh. doxed the guy who found out, to, who stopped yeah. this kill switch, <laughs> who, who found this kill switch. So, uh, this, I think it was the Daily Telegraph. Yeah. The Telegraph started it first, they found his name. And yeah. then from his name, everyone, all the other tablets started going through and putting up his, uh, his life, and, life and his love for pizza. Apparently. Yes, yeah, they did. <laughs> love, which was really weird. Because and it's really bad because it, for like security reasons, this is a he's a security researcher. Right? Yeah, whose life is now public. It's now public. Yeah, and, public. you know his safety is actually at risk because you know this guy has just shut down a, a huge ransomware uh, campaign by yeah, whoever. Will. You know, could actually belong to some criminal organization. Actually, no. Uh, cu- currently, signs point to the fact that it's probably owned by North Korea. That's, that's still a huge thing, you know. But I just don't come to Malaysia. He won't get assassinated here. <laughs> just, just saying. All right, don't come here. Oh man, well, it's probably safer in the UK. I have to agree with that advice. <laughs> but yeah, so he's been doxxed by accident. That's not crazy. by accident, really it's, crazy. it's by choice, by, by tabloids. tabloids. You, know, you know how UK tabloids like, they're yeah. the best tabloids in the world, so they know how they yeah, They are really good at their jobs. They're savage tabloids. But yeah, this is just a lesson in listening to all these cybersecurity companies who have been telling you, this is coming. Yeah. This Something on this scale is coming, something is dangerous is lurking out there. Please patch your turn, systems. Please turn on your Windows update and let your system reboot. It, yeah. This is what happens when you don't listen to the people exactly. warning you. <laughs> and it's quite interesting to me anyway, because um, I end up covering all these cybersecurity things. Mm-mm. And you hear it every time, you know, the ransomware, ransomware, ransomware. That's right. And bam! bam! Now we really see a huge one. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I also read something very interesting about ransomware. It's apparently, the whoever is behind it, can't keep up with the ransom payments. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, the people are suspecting that it's a manual operation, so when people pay them, they get it, they and then they have to... find to... a code and then send it to them manually. Yes. <laughs> so... It, it, it does make sense, because it was, it's paid in Bitcoin. Yeah. yeah so, so, that's not um, the easiest payment system in the world. <laughs> it's 300 US dollars in Bitcoin, or 300, 300 Bitcoin? Bitcoin. No. It? It's... That's it started at money. 300 US dollars in Bitcoin. Yeah, uh-huh. 300 US dollars in Bitcoin. That was the US. first wave. Yeah, and then? Later, they increased it to 600. Woo! Yeah. Whoever it's, is there is filthy rich right now. Well, it depends on who's actually paying them. Because the, they have like a window to pay uh-huh. the $300 first, yeah. right? And then there's another window that we have to pay 600 after that. But to be fair, everyone who's been affected will probably pay them. They have no choice, right? The so big com- companies have no choice. Yeah. I mean, if you're... The NHS. <laughs> you're the NHS here. Sure, you've got backups, but you don't back up all the time. Enough. You might be 24 hours late, and 24 hours of, of patient data could mean life or death for a yeah, lot of people. Yeah, pretty much. So, God. Yeah, they got no choice. Um, That's crazy. Spanish, the Spanish Telefonica. Yeah. That was also hit. Yeah. Strange enough, Russia was the largest victim. Yeah, this uh, when I read when I read a glimpse of that. Yeah, that's that's quite funny. Why Russia? It was like ten times more, isn't it? Almost the ten times. Yeah. yeah. 
I know that are people who just not bother to update their Windows XP. Like, I mean, it's Russia. <laughs> it, it is Russia. <laughs> it is Russia after all. Could have been just an accident happening. Exactly. But, the, I mean, there's another discussion. Microsoft has come out after this. They said, okay, we've, we've patched the vulnerability. Mm -hmm. It's going to stop spreading. And then they've issued a very strongly worded statement against the NSA saying, yeah. you shouldn't own these things. This is dangerous. And, Why? And also they mentioned about you know the, the vulnerability within the government computer system yeah. that they sh that the government should address that. See, basically, uh, when that is not addressed and suddenly those vulnerability hit the public space, everyone is screwed. Yeah, yeah. That, that's true because... Um, the US government, their spy agencies are hoarding vulnerabilities in order to hack the enemies. Oh, or, right. So they, they, they know a lot of different problems. And they're saying, we are not going to disclose this, we don't want to close this loophole because it makes it easier for spying. Right. Yeah. And Microsoft is very unhappy with this. Right. And what's interesting is, um, back when Obama was still president, he actually issued a, an executive order saying that all agencies must disclose any vulnerability they find to the relevant company. Ooh. He actually signed an order saying that you should do this. Yep. They didn't. That's that's how this all happened. Yeah, pretty much. You had a president who said, "Listen, I understand the concerns. I want you. I want everyone to work together." Mm -hmm. And then you've got an agency who says, Maybe. "No." <laughs> I like how this works now. Yeah. That's that's. Wanna cry, which has made quite a lot of people cry. <laughs> Wanna cry, become yeah. really cry. Oh God, I, I really hope it's not the North North Koreans behind it. Oh man, I really hope it's not the North Koreans, because <laughs> who knows what else they've hidden in there. True enough. True. So, but lesson for everyone. Yeah, update your PC. Update everything. Could it be that these people are also using like um, pirated software? Uh, also possible could, could you don't get you, you don't get, get updates. security patches because yeah. you can't patch actually, actually these days you can yeah no this is we don't stand you can stand, but like you're, this is more like an effect it affects the the, the, the entire structure the before yeah. one yes but yeah that's probably the case could be that yeah. could be a reason why probably right. I mean Microsoft <laughs> understands it's dangerous enough that <laughs> even now if you pirate Windows 10 they will still push you security updates yeah, yeah that's true whether you like it or not you are getting these updates <laughs> but if older Windows like XP 7 Maybe why could be. Yeah. could be why I guess. Yeah. Well, uh, on that sobering note, that's it for us this week. Andrew is still writing about the HTC Four. Is he? Yeah. He really love it. Wow. Yes. I don't know because we, we've got like whatever that I just said is basically what he's writing right now. So the Malaysian availability is coming soon. So sure. Um, that story will be hopefully be up by the time it's this podcast up, goes live. Page. Um, just the Malaysian availability is coming up. Sure. Yeah. By the time this podcast goes up, none of that will matter because it will be already be on there <laughs> and you will hopefully have already read about it. Yes, and uh, join the discussion actually on the page. Yep. Yeah, that'd be great actually. Please go ahead. So, thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Take care.